Hey guys, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. We're back on the Hue Tap. Hold up, what's that awesome piece? That is a 2x2 two two boat skid. This part has been around since 1991. As of now, it seems like we've got 33 color options. Uh, it's worth noting that several of the released colors are transparent, including our transparent neon orange. It's apparently going to be retired or has been retired, will no longer be showing up. So plenty of opportunities to get that piece in that color. It's been around a good long time and it's still going strong here in 2022, uh, as we will see when we look at our color options. I wanted to think about a few of the techniques that have been around for this piece. A uh, pretty old one is the hamburger technique where this part is actually used as the top, kind of that curved bun so this is pretty simple, um, just gathering up a few different colored pieces to represent the contents of the hamburger and then finishing that off with the 2x2. Uh, two two. Now compared to a minifigure it's kind of large so you know as a food item it might not be the most in scale. The other one is this interesting kind of sphere, spherical build. It's not a perfect sphere but it does have an interesting construction um, basically what's the key piece here is this um, scale of flower that actually fits in between the studs. You're just going to do that a couple times uh, and form the sphere around that snot brick in the middle. So it rolls pretty good. Um, it is not a perfect, perfectly legal build. There's a little bit of uh, unconnectedness. It doesn't stick all the way, but it's a fun little build nonetheless. But I think the main use for this piece usually revolves around um, reducing friction. So I have an example here. I have this little speeder uh, vehicle and on the carpet. Because it has the layer of plates on the bottom, it has a lot of friction with that surface. So it's not going to slide very well. And even on a harder surface, you know, it slides a little bit better. Uh, but there's still going to be a little bit of friction um, on all of that flat surface with the plates. So this piece dates back to 91, and some of the first times it was used was in this configuration to help reduce the friction on uh, things like these little boats. And then as time went on, it got used for some Star Wars speeders and some larger uh, sailing vessels that have come and gone through the years. And for the most part, this is still kind of the main use of the piece today, although it does have a lot of other applications when you need kind of a slimmer connection point to uh, help hold your pieces together. So with these guys on the speeder now, just taking a look at if we can reduce that friction at all. It isn't super noticeable on the carpet, um, but I think you definitely get a little bit where that is now sliding better. On the hard surface, I think it definitely makes a much bigger difference and um, there's really a very minimal point of contact between the edge of that skid and the floor. So that is probably the main use of this piece, continues to be so, and that's something you notice is a lot of times if these have been used for a while, they do end up with a lot of scuff marks in that general location. Jumping on to Bricklink, just looking at some of the color information here. Um, I, I like to use Bricklink to look at the dates, but it does lag behind a little bit. I mentioned there were 33 colors. One of those isn't being pulled by Bricklink yet, but at its introduction in 1991, we had our light gray and our black. Two years later, we got the blue, and then um, the white, yellow, and tan were slowly introduced. And really the first 10 years, that's all you had, the dark gray in that mix as well. And then you actually got that transparent neon orange in 2002. That was the first transparent use of the part. And as you go along, you can kind of see uh, when other colors got introduced, more solid colors, more transparent colors as you go through the years. And up to today, uh, the most recent use on Bricklink is this uh, satin or opalescent transparent light blue this year. And on Rebrickable, it's already pulling uh, a set that uses the sand blue as the uh, 
botanical collection. So there's four of the sand blue skid in that set. Um, I think this is released. It's pretty new, so that's why it's not on Bricklink yet. Uh, but yeah, we've got these 33 colors. And there's a significant number of rare colors here. Um, the general consensus for rare in this sense is that it is three sets or less. So of course, our sand blue is brand new. That's going to be a rare color. The transparent light blue opal right here, that's only in two sets so far. It's also a pretty new color. The spring yellowish green is kind of a hidden side color. I think that's only in three sets. And then the medium lavender, another rare one. And maybe a surprising one to be rare is the medium blue. Where did that go? Somewhere in here. So the medium blue is only in one set from 2017. We do have that color, but it might be harder to get the 2x2 two two skid in medium blue if you're looking for it. We've also got, like I mentioned, lots of the color options, 33 total colors. There's some, uh, some printed ones as well. I think the most common printed use is kind of an eye detail. So you see several different um, eyeball looking prints here. And even without being printed, this got used as some eye detail on the Wally set. So that's a really good example of what you can do with a kind of a smooth rounded surface like that. Close out a brick link. Um, some of the other prints here, I do want to point out the sesame seed bun print and just jump over and see where this was used. Don't remember off the top of my head. In tan, Scooby-Doo, yeah. So Scooby-Doo got the actual printed hamburger bun boat skid. The rest of us will have to just use our regular tan. There's also a couple of uh, faces, face detail. Um, the small lunar lander from the Saturn V set and a few other ones that have been printed over the years. So a couple printed options, um, but this is a really common part. Some of the stats up here at the top. Um, 31 years of use, 1900 total sets according to the rubricable database here, and then the set parts actually adds up all of the instances. So if a set used like four black ones, it's going to add that into this number. And then among the community, very popular piece to use as well. Um, almost 12,000 mocks that use the skid. A uh, couple of things worthy of mention with this part just related to the database. This part has its own service pack, so you could just straight up buy 50 boat skids. Although the caveat here, I believe this was an educational DACTA service pack, so maybe not as available to the public more so uh, something that was restricted for educational purchase. And that's actually the case for the sets that have the most of these skids as well. Some of the highest part counts I saw were for the black 2x2 two two skid, and there's 80 and 72 in some of these recent educational packs. I think the record holder for the regular set release is the Millennium Falcon that uses 59 of these skids in black. I'm not really sure where it uses all these, probably inside um, in the panel structures. So it's actually ranking up pretty high in the overall quantity. If you rank all the parts in the set by quantity, um, number one spot is actually the 2x3 plate. There are 243 of these. This is the, this is the older version of the, the UCS Falcon. But this boat skid, that's not something you see up here in the top, um, you know, top 20 of parts sorted by quantity too often. And even there, 59 instances is pretty high. So interesting to see that high count. Another thing worthy of note here is the medium blue transparent. This one glows under ultraviolet. This is actually locked to a theme. So in 2004, the Alpha Team theme um, was released in kind of this color scheme or sand blue and dark red um, for the, the different factions. Um, but it seems like the only time this piece has been used in this color was with insets from the Alpha Team theme. Um, so you get a case here where a specific part in this color is actually locked in to a theme. I don't think that happens very often, especially for 
um, these really common parts. You know, you might get something like a, a custom minifig mold that would make sense to be locked into a theme like Monkey Kid, um, but this 2x2 boat skid, I think this is probably the only color that's actually locked into a theme, in that transparent medium blue. Another technique here that I had pulled up was the use in the chair backing, just uh, as a little bit of detail, um, where you don't necessarily want those square edges, kind of gives the implication that there's this cushion surface here. We already looked at the use of the eyes in Wally. -E. Another interesting use that I thought of was on the buffers from this train set, um, where these are actually connected with some Technic connections and kind of replace the original buffer part that was all one mold. So a nice use of the part there. And then one other thing that's definitely noteworthy is the use of this piece in the bowing up here in the nose cone. They actually use the 4x4 nose cone with the, uh, the hollow cylinder on the inside and then they can put this piece in uh, kind of reversed that building direction to have this really smooth continuous nose cone surface. Um, remember this set is back from 2006 so the smoothing options for building um, you know like a nose cone or a fuselage at that point you're mainly looking at wedge bricks and wedge plates so there were not a lot of good options for building these curved surfaces. I think they did really good considering the parts that were around back in 2006 for this part. All right, just to close it off here, there are a couple notes on the rubricable page. Uh, it looks like there's three different versions of this piece. I mean, it's not gonna matter too much when you're actually building, um, whether or not you use one or the other. The older one, uh, I think the inner surface of the studs is a little bit tighter, so you can still fit a bar in there like the lightsaber blade. It's just going to hold it a little tighter. Uh, and the more recent two, I think it's a more uh, standard connection with that bar. And then between these two, uh, the two and the three, there's really just minor mold differences. Otherwise, it's all the same part. Um, you know, your two, six, five, four, four digit part number dating back to 91. Um, yeah, definitely a part that I wanted to have featured at some point. Um, getting back into our HUTAP series, this is number 21, and I'll be keeping an eye out for parts to feature again. But yeah, it's kind of been a while since I jumped into depth on a specific LEGO piece and really looking at how that has contributed to um, the LEGO building experience over the years. The boat skid, the boat stud, whatever you want to call it, this piece definitely has some interesting history, interesting techniques to explore, and hopefully covered a few of those in the video today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers.